Let's have a look at a practical example of how minimizing the number of objects in your scene and minimizing the number of polygons in your scene can be a very effective production tool. We're going to open a file from your project directory. Click on the Application button, then click the Open option. You should be in the Scenes directory inside of the Understanding 3D Project directory. In the Scenes folder, navigate to Chapter 02 and select the Chapter 02 Level of Detail 01.max file and click Open to open the file. When it loads, you'll see what is a very simple scene or what appears to be a very simple scene with 1,000 boxes and 1,000 spheres, each with a high number of polygons. In the perspective view, you can see that I have enabled some statistics. The 7 key is the keyboard shortcut for statistics. It shows that we have about 8.7 million polygons. We have 2,000 objects, which is not shown in the statistics, but that's how many objects there are in the scene. The point of this is that these objects are much higher density than they need to be, and there are a lot of objects not visible in the scene. There are spheres hidden inside of each one of these boxes. We're going to go ahead and render the perspective viewport. Make sure the perspective view is active. There should be a yellow box around the perspective viewport. Move the cursor up to the main toolbar and click the Render button on the very right-hand side. Allow the rendering to take place. The speed of the rendering will depend on your computer system. So we don't know how long it's going to take, but it'll be relative no matter which computer you're using. Here we have our rendering of the boxes. It's an array of boxes totaling 1,000 with a sphere inside each one. We cannot see the spheres. They're hidden by boxes. And they're absolutely visually useless information in the scene. This would be very similar to rendering a building with all of the furniture on the inside. If your concern is with the exterior, the furniture is wasted geometry. Close the render dialog. Now we're going to eliminate the spheres. To make it a little easier, there is a selection set already created, a named selection set. Move the cursor to the main toolbar. Click the down arrow on the right-hand side of the Name Selection Set drop-down box. Click on the Name Selection Set called Spheres. This will select all the spheres in the scene. With all the spheres selected, we press the Delete key, which will get rid of all the spheres by deleting them from the scene. Since we can't see them, and they add no visual information to the rendering, there's no reason to keep them. If we look at our statistics again, we now notice that we have 4.8 million polygons, and we're left with only 1,000 objects. So we've eliminated nearly half the polygons and half the objects. Notice down at the bottom left side of the screen is my render time. Your time will be different depending on the computer system you're using. Faster systems will have shorter render times, where slower systems will have longer times. This is the amount of time it took to render this last frame. Remember your render time, or you can write it down. Render the perspective view again by clicking the Render button on the right-hand side of the main toolbar. Once 3ds Max is done rendering, we'll compare the render time at the lower left-hand side of the screen. You should notice that it took less time to render than previously. And in some cases, you can knock off nearly a third of the render time for the scene. And does this make very much of a difference? For rendering this one frame, it might not make a tremendous amount of difference, just a few seconds. But if I'm rendering thousands of frames, a few seconds can add up. Or if I have a rendering time of several hours, decreasing that render time by a third can save me a significant amount of time. We did this simply by getting rid of the objects that we don't need. Now let's see if we can get this to render even faster. Go ahead and close the render dialog. In the perspective viewport, go ahead and select one of the boxes. It doesn't matter which one. In the command panel, click on the Modify tab. That'll take us to the Modify panel. 
If we look in the parameters rollout for the box we've selected, you'll notice that we have the length, width, and height segments set to a value of 20. At this point, it's not important to understand what's going on with these numbers, just that we're going to reduce the number of polygons each box is made of. This can easily be done by right-clicking on the spinner to the right of the number value for each segment option. That will automatically set the value to one segment for each value. Click the Render button. By reducing the number of polygons, we've reduced the render time significantly, and the scene looks exactly the same way it did before we reduced the number of polygons. So we have significantly reduced our rendering time without changing the visual quality of our rendered image. This is one of those rules that you always want to follow. Close the render window, and if we look at the statistics, we can see that we're down to just about 12,000 polygons. So we've taken this scene all the way from 8 million polygons down to 12,000 polygons without changing the visual quality.